Welcome to Cosmic Roadmap. I'm your host, Melissa Lambor, Reiki Astro Geo Guide and best selling author. Have you ever wondered where in the world you should be? This podcast is about bridging cultures and helping the endless wanderer find their purpose and place in the world. Hear stories from digital nomads, avid travelers, and aspiring globetrotters, and learn how they discovered where they were destined to be and build their legacy. If you're curious about astrogeography and where you're meant to be on the planet, go to CosmicRoadmap.com to download your free Passport to Purpose. My special guest today is Amy Russell. She is a working nurse based in Carolina Beach, North Carolina, that is continuing her education. Through her spiritual journey, she keeps her options open to new and exciting things. She's a mother to one son, and we met through Jess Acock. I just interviewed her, which is quite, you know, you know, the synchronicities while, I, while I've been here, the alignment has been amazing. And I just love that, you know, we connected through, through our mutual friend and you just completed my six week group experience, Passport to Purpose. So I'm really excited to talk to you now that you came back from Europe. So welcome. Thank you so much. I am honored to be a guest on yes. your podcast <laughs> and I have actually done two trips since we finished in our cosmic roadmap thing. And it has yeah. been very, very interesting. And I didn't realize that I'm actually on the wrong coast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when we were looking, yeah, what was it? California was even better for you, right? Yeah, it, it it's it was very very interesting. But I know you said Colorado Springs was a really really good area. That area, Nevada, yes. and even up into California. So that whole area over there is. Yeah, I'm looking back at somewhere your map that I, and you have like a lot of Jupiter energy. So yes. like that that abundance. Yes. Yeah. Even on the yeah like the LA coast. Yeah, a lot of mm -hmm. Mars energy, so fiery, like creative energy, love, Jupiter, yep. which is more abundance, right? Yeah, there's that's correct. Yep, yep. Yeah. So, and do you do you have plans to to move out there? And because as a you can travel, right? Like as a traveling nurse, like that's yes, that's what I you're looking am, into. Correct. I'm an LPN right now, mm -hmm. so I am finishing up with my RN. I will actually go back to school in August. I have three classes, and I plan to relocate once I finish that program somewhere between New Mexico, Arizona, or Colorado. I have not narrowed it down, but somewhere in that area is where I'll call home for a little while because I'll have to work at least for one year as an RN before I can travel. Right, right. So, and but that yeah, is definitely I a do big option. I do remember us talking about, yeah, was it mm -hmm. El Dorado? Like that was one of the uh, regions? I think so. Yeah. I'm not 100% sure. I know it was on the Western side of New That's Mexico. Kind of like the, to... the Four Corners area. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So... Yeah. I do know it was somewhere ever in there. And I remember you saying Colorado Springs was a good area mm -hmm. for me, um, Turkey, but yeah, anything West, I think of Albuquerque was a good area. Mm -hmm. So and I'll have to definitely learn how to speak some Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that would, that would probably be beneficial. Yes. Um, and how has your trip been? You, you just came back from Europe, right? I just came back mm -hmm. from Europe. I went to London and Paris and Amsterdam. Okay. And I loved London and I loved, pa not Paris, but Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. Paris was okay. It wasn't kind of my scene. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, I had a hard time. I don't know. I just had a weird vibe from Paris. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel like I felt at home at all in right. Paris. It definitely was not an area that I would stay for. Okay. Stay and, in for a while. And we, and we did look back at your, at your map and you had your Pluto line there, which is about like rebirth and transformation. So that may be why you felt kind of ungrounded. There's Neptune energy, which is like a very heady type of energy where, yeah. So a lot of ungrounded energy there probably. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, and I could definitely feel that as mm -hmm. soon as we came off of the train and started walking toward our hotel, because we were with 
we were within walking distance to the mm -hmm. train station and it was just very, very, I don't really know how to put it in words, but it was definitely not my vibe. Yeah. When we were able to like get out in the city, cause it was warm and sunny in Paris, it was cool mm -hmm. and a little rainy and overcast in, in England or London, but it was, it was warm and sunny in Paris. And so we were able to ride bikes and we stayed on the bikes more than anything. But when the sun could hit my face and mm -hmm. everything, oh, it was incredible. Mm -hmm. That part I really liked about Europe altogether right. is the public transportation, how they have bikes for people if they want to bike around the town yeah that was one of the best ways to get around and the bike so we paths, were, right yes yeah. they had a lot of bike paths I mean and everything is so close together over there mm -hmm. where over here in the states it's all spread out exactly unless you live in like a huge city and even then I, I don't feel like they still have the same setup as far as with bikers you know biking around town versus and even pedestrians mm -hmm. I mean they have a lot of lot better pedestrian stuff over there as well yeah so. now, yeah right now that I'm in Valencia Spain I'm noticing that the the bike paths right the the pedestrian mm -hmm. zone so it's it's yep. just very easy to to get around and so many ways to to you know you don't have to just take that one bus that shows up every hour like every 10 right. minutes you can either take the metro the tram the bus mm -hmm. like yeah it's yeah it's there's so many different ways that you can get around so it's it's been fantastic <laughs> to just enjoy oh, yeah. that because I'm, I'm coming from you know new jersey and new york city where you can't really bike around like good luck <laughs> <laughs> yep. yep. Um, and it's just, it's very hard to, to get on public transit and to, to get around from one place to the other. So yeah. And how was London? London was great. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you, it, it's a little pricey, but London was by far my favorite. And I definitely, definitely see myself retiring somewhere in Europe. I'm not sure okay. where because I want to go to a few more countries. Well, it doesn't seem and like it's going to be Paris. <laughs> Paris no, is off the list. Paris. <laughs> yeah, Paris is off the list. I would like to go back though to Paris. I would like to do the museum, the Luge. Yeah, I definitely want to do that. We did do the Eiffel Tower, which that was very cool. Okay. Very, very cool. Um, but there's a couple of other parts of you know, Paris that I would actually like to see. I definitely don't want to go back to the high dollar section of all the store, you know, name mm -hmm. brand stuff like Chanel and stuff like that. Yeah. Cause I did go into a Chanel store to look for some perfume for my mom and mm -hmm. the lady was not very nice. Mm. So I was like, okay, I will see you later. And yeah. I walked out. So, right. and you mentioned that you did have some difficulty with the language barrier, right? Yes. If, if you didn't yes. speak French, it was, it was a little difficult. They're very to hard to communicate. Yeah. Yep. They're very hard mm -hmm. to communicate with you. Some people are very nice about mm -hmm. it, but then you do have some that are not yeah. as easy to get along with. And, and that's, that's something that I've heard. And I also experienced when I visited too. So compared to like, let's say Montreal or like uh, over yeah. in, in Quebec, like in, in, mm -hmm. you know, near the, in Canada. Yeah. Yeah. It's completely different. So yeah. And the other place was the Netherlands. How, yes. how did that? Oh, feel? I loved that. Uh, you had some loved Mars energy, like some fiery, like creative energy. Did you feel any, anything? Like oh yeah. The, the city Amsterdam is actually not real big. It's actually kind of a smaller city, but it has a lot kind of packed into it. Yeah. But we did go up to where the windmills are mm. and that area was real nice. You have the water that you, you know, plays into the part up there. It's more farmland type of an area. Okay. They had goats, they had sheep, they had the, the it was just, it was so cool and gardens, yeah. like a whole little city mm -hmm. type thing. And that's where they make the clogs. Oh, Okay. Yeah. So that was really, really cool. We did do that. We spent a couple hours up there to do that because unfortunately we weren't able to go to the Van Gogh museum that we wanted to go to or the Anne Frank house 
because you need to buy tickets at least three weeks ahead of time to be able to get in. And you were probably there for like a week, right? You weren't there. We were there for two days. Oh, we were there. Yeah, we did. We did two nights in Amsterdam. Okay. So we got there. We got there relatively early in the morning, Mm -hmm. I do believe. And so we had a good day and a half. Yeah. To really do things. We didn't bike around there because it's a little bit smaller, like I was saying, Mm -hmm. and we did the tram. And so the tram ride was actually really good. And the trams yeah. come every 10 minutes, I do believe is, is what it is, 10 to, tw- 10 to 15 minutes there. Right. And that was cool. But you can walk around majority of Amsterdam. And then we did a boat ride mm-hmm. in the water. Oh, yeah, because they, well. they have like a canal, right? Uh, yes, like yes, city. Mm-hmm. yes. And it was really, really cool, really, really cool. And if you stood in one spot too long, you were going to get a contact buzz, just saying, uh, <laughs> um, because of all the stuff yes, that they yes. have over there. Yeah, because you know, cannabis the is, that, is, is free. Yes, uh, yeah, it like is. Completely it legal. Is. Yes. <laughs> yes. And a lot of the souvenir stores have a lot of stuff in it to oh. where you have brownies, cookies. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my gosh. It's like so, Disneyland, yeah. adult Disneyland. Yes, pretty much. But yeah, it, we smelled it quite a bit in the streets mm-hmm. there. So yeah. And it's I thought it was legal there, but it yeah. was, you know, hey, to each is their own. Don't mind mm-hmm. it. Oh, it yeah. doesn't bother it's, me. It's getting like that in the States too. So I think New yeah. York City and yeah, as things are becoming more recreational rather than medicinal. So, but um, yeah. So where, like, where are you on this journey? You, you're, you're going towards the RN, you know, becoming a registered nurse, but you've also talked about diving into the spiritual journey so where are you on that journey and we spoke about a few places also in South America right that you're connected to yes yes really want to end up with doing women's health because a lot of women do not know how to take care of their bodies Mm. and so my end result would I want to do nurse practitioner And I I do want to focus on women's health. That's where I'm definitely being called to. But I have never felt like I belong to one place ever. I've Mm. always wanted to get out and see the world and spread my wings, Mm. so to speak. And coming into this spiritual journey five, four years ago now, it's really opened my eyes to a lot of things. And it, I, I keep getting aligned with all the right people to just keep broadening those dreams. Yeah. So I, I really want to go and this right here, this whole astro travel thing Mm -hmm. has really made a lot of sense because I have been wanting to go to Arizona for at least two years, two and a half years. And when I went, it was incredible. And I can't wait to go back because there's just so much to do and see over there. But I just felt so at home in that area. And it really took me by surprise because I didn't think I would feel that way. Right. And you were in the Sedona area, right? I was in Sedona. Mm -hmm. And, but I, I don't, it, I don't know really how to put it in words, but it, it was very, very much of an area that I enjoyed. Mm. And it was nice to be able to experience one of the vortexes. I didn't get to experience them all, but each area we went to, each climb we did, or each hot trail that we did, it definitely brought up a lot for me. I did, I was able to really release a lot of things that I needed to release. Right. And it makes sense because you have your Chiron line there and the Chiron is the, the wounded healer, right? The, the energy that is meant to help you heal. And, and that one in particular is I see for you, which, which, which has to do with that connection to ancestral, like lineage, like healing your lineage. So it makes a lot of sense why it was like this. Yeah. You, you felt almost oh, this yeah. release, right? Yes, as, as absolutely. Were, yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. And, the, and there is a story that you were telling me too about was it, were there doves or birds that you? No, it was birds. And it's uh -huh. so funny you say that because I was getting ready to say that. I was sitting on the side of the one of the mountains and I was just sitting there, you know, just taking things in and just kind of sitting with things. And out of nowhere, this flock of birds encompasses me and flies. I mean, literally, like probably three feet maybe above my head but yeah. around my entire body and it was an in very incredible experience and I don't know really how to put it into words mm -hmm. how it you know it just it took me by surprise but it reminded me that I'm not alone on this journey and I am doing what I need to be doing and it's only going to get better from here. And I can't wait to continue to spread my wings. And once I get to the point to where I am allowed to, I can do more traveling with right. my work. Yes. Because I enjoy being a nurse. I enjoy taking care of people. I enjoy educating people the proper way, but I really want to do a more holistic approach. I don't want to focus a whole lot on medications. Right. I like the alternative stuff. I use essential oils for myself and okay. I don't take a whole lot of medication on mm -hmm. my own. Like really and focusing it's funny. on preventative care, right? Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, when I tell them how old I am and tell them that I have a a son who will be 24 in a few weeks, they're like, no way. So yeah, they, they, it just really shocks people. And I, uh -huh. I try my best not to stress about things that right. I have no control over. And that's one of the other things on the spiritual journey that I've learned to do. And it's learn to sit in the unknown mm. and be comfortable with the unknown. I have also finished up my shamanic practitionership with my cousin Oh, Marie, who um, was, I'm so glad I was able to do that with her. That was incredible. And she continues, you know, we, we still continue to talk about things and, you know, talk about our own journeys because our journeys are a little, are, are kind of similar, but they're not, they still have a, you know, their own thing, but it's fun to sit and really talk and compare our journeys especially with our twin flames. So, because yes. that, that journey has been very interesting <laughs> for both of us, but it kind of similar, but still yet different. Exactly. And but, yeah, uh, and yeah, you mentioned the twin flames and I feel like I've had a twin flame in, in my life as, as well. So yeah, if anybody doesn't know, it has to do with like what the, like the, the twin souls, right? Like finally yes. like coming together um, and they're yes. supposed to be like a catalyst in, in our lives in some way. And I, I felt like the, my particular twin flame was the catalyst to me getting into my business because I felt well, like I was stagnant in my career and I'm like, there has to be something more. Yes. And, and that's, yes. yeah. When you meet that person, it's like, boom. So Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And I, and I, Hey, I, my twin flame totally has mm -hmm. really been great for me. Taught me a lot about healing. Yeah. Ta she, you know, taught me the things that I've needed to heal. So it pushed me toward the shamanic right. thing. And, you know, and it's just really a lot of things have aligned since yeah. I met that person and I have no regrets, yeah. you know, and I, like I said, I cannot wait to see where this journey continues. Yeah. That's so interesting. Cause for me, I, I started going to like my local yoga studio and that's how I got into mm -hmm. Reiki, into the Ayurveda and okay. how Astro Geo popped up. So yeah, like you, yeah, yeah. it's so amazing how yeah, you meet a person, you, even if you don't believe in twin flames, but some people you, you meet them and they, they are the catalyst to, you know, they inspire you to, to, to be greater. So mm -hmm. I love that. And you're, you're coming to us from a camper. So that's you're, right. you've kind of like let go, right? You're, you're mm -hmm. a, a minimalist. So that's another part of, you know, the, the spiritual journey, letting go and, and moving forward. So it's just a symbol of, of you, you know, propelling yourself forward in, in whatever direction, like the, you know, the, the universe or the wind takes you. That's correct. Mm -hmm. That is correct. Yeah. Do, I have a, yeah. uh, 
go ahead. Um, mm -hmm. oh, I was going to say like, how, yeah, the, the camper, like how I, did you get into okay. it? Mm -hmm. So I, I had a house first and I was there for six years, a three bedroom, two bath house. It was, my son left, go back home to Greensboro and I decided, you know, I don't need the house anymore. It's me, the dog and two cats. And so I was like, it's time to sell the house, everything. And it was in 2020, right, right before COVID hit full yep. swing and the world shut down. Yep. So 2020 was a bad year for a lot of people, but it was a really good year for me. Yeah. I sold my house that I had bought on my own. Mm. And I bought a town home and then I finished nursing school and then I bought a brand new car. So 2020 was really, really good for me. And then in 2021, the market started going back up for the housing and everything. And I was like, you know, I really, I don't need this town home. It was a good hour from work. I was tired of the drive. And I was like, it's time to make another change. However, the whole camper thing, I had actually visited back in 2018, right after Austin left, I was really, really thinking like, you know, I really don't need anything more than that. Yeah. And so I think the process, it was just a process that I went through from the house down to the townhome. So I, I decreased in size with the townhome, still had to get rid of some stuff. And then when I sold the townhome, I really had to get rid of the things that I no longer needed that were no longer serving me. So I just, I sold everything I could sell. I trashed what I needed to trash. And I have literally just a few things, just my pictures from over the years and my clothes. And now I have just my dog. Mm -hmm. I just put down my second cat, which mm -hmm. is horrible, yeah. but I knew it was for the best. I mean, he was 17, so yeah. he lived a good long life and I am yeah. grateful for my animals. But after this, there will be no more for a while. <laughs> yeah. It's, and how has it been like with a dog, you said a dog and two cats. So three, three animals in, in the camper. No, well, oh, uh, one cat I put down before, right as I sold the house, town home. So okay. I only had Samson, the one cat, and Avery, the dog, mm. and it wasn't too, too bad. They actually did pretty good, and yeah. Avery's a, a relatively good-sized dog. She's mm -hmm. not a small dog. Yeah. She's a lab retriever mix, so she did really, she's done very, very well in the small space, and when I put Samson down just a couple of days ago, actually, it's been a week today, yeah. and she, she's been looking for him. Mm, like where they had a love-hate yeah. relationship but but she's now still, it's like wait where yeah where, yeah where she's she? like where is he where is he <laughs> so she'll go over to the area that he was yeah. in and she'll look for him but it's getting a little bit better so yeah yeah but well, I, a, I would I don't regret anything and right. I wouldn't trade it for the world but I that, am within that's inspiring walking distance now yeah. to the beach Right. So, I mean, I have the beach that I can walk to. I am within walking distance to a lot of the restaurants and mm. stuff here at Carolina Beach. So I, I'm glad I did it. Yeah, that's so inspiring for, for anyone that's listening, right? To, to yep, just let right. go, right? To let go mm -hmm. and not be stuck. And, you know, a camper may be an option to, to kind of travel that's right. wherever you may be. If it's in the States and in Europe or, you know, Australia, wherever wherever you, you may be located. And yeah. So where do you see yourself going in the next you know few months? I think you were traveling more than I was. No, I'm, like, I'm, <laughs> I'm jealous. I think you, I think we were crossing paths. You might've been what in, yes. What, were you in I France? I think I was or? in Amsterdam. Amsterdam. I was in Amsterdam. When I just when arrived you, to Spain. When you just arrived over there. <laughs> and I was actually leaving the next day when you yep. got there. Exactly. But I have a trip, one more trip in August before I go back to school. Okay. And then I'll have two semesters to finish school. Mm -hmm. So I'll stay put until July. Okay. But I'll start looking at the first of the year for some RN internship, not internships, but residency programs out West yeah. and decide where I want to land out there. Exactly. And 
I haven't decided if I'm going to have my dad take my camper out there mm. and put something else here or what I'm going to do just yet. But I will probably have, I'll probably end up moving my camper out there. Yeah. Cause there's so many, because, so many camper like communities out there. Oh yeah. Like, yeah. Oh yeah. There's a lot, but mm. you know, after being here, I don't know that I could function in a normal place. <laughs> You know, because it would be too big for me. Right. Because right. I'm not used to it. Oh, so, it's so cozy now, right? Like you're so yes, used to, yes, to everything. Yeah. Yes. And did and you, actually, did, I was going to ask if you, did you, did you buy it new or was it something that you bought? I actually bought it hand? off of my ex-husband. Okay. And it was, it's a 2018, mm -hmm. but it's, it's perfect. It yeah. has the perfect amount of space in mm -hmm. it. I don't have any, you know, there's no issues. It, it's, it's exactly what I need. Cause it's just myself yeah, and my dog right now. So yeah, no, I, I love it. I wouldn't trade it for the world. Amazing. I would not trade it for the world. So some of the places that we looked at were Italy. I know that you had a strong connection to Italy. What was like growing up? Like, how did you feel connected to, to the culture there? Definitely the food. <laughs> there was a restaurant in a little town called Jamestown that I lived close to. And it was known for their Italian food, the lasagna mostly. But lasagna has always been one of my favorite Italian dishes. Right. And I actually worked there when I was 25 and it was amazing. I, and I really kind of experienced more dishes. Mm. And when I was working there, I was also working at another company or right before that I worked for another company. It was an aviation company. And I met this gentleman who was from New Jersey. Okay. And I went on a trip with him to his daughter's or his granddaughter's christening in Jersey. Mm -hmm. And they're Italian. Yep. Italian and American. So, <laughs> yep. yep. And so when we were in New York City, which was right after 9-11, mm -hmm. I went in May after that happened. And we went to Umberto's. Mm -hmm. And I, it was amazing. Amazing. But I've always, Italian food has always been a thing for me. I've always loved Italian food. I could probably eat my weight in pasta. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so, and it's funny you say that about mm -hmm. Italy because next year mm -hmm. I plan on going to Spain in Madrid okay. awesome. and doing Italy and Greece. Okay. I'll definitely give you pointers for Madrid. <laughs> making Absolutely. My, making my way there in the next few days. Okay. Uh, but yeah, Italy, you had Pluto energy. So like very transformative, but at the same time, you had this healing energy there. Healing and also some, let's see, some Mars energy. So related to your career, a lot of this fiery, like creative, just like courageous energy. So it, it makes sense why, why you feel so like... Mm -hmm. It just makes you feel good overall. So how can people yeah, reach you? Like, and how can they follow your journey? Because well, you, you right. visited so many places and just, just to name a few, like how, how many countries have you been to? Do you know? So I've actually been to Romania, okay. Hungary, now England, uh -huh. France, and the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. And so those are the different countries I've been to, yeah. but I, I'm, a, I'm definitely going to expand that. So that's where I've been so far. But mm -hmm. like I said, next year, it, I plan, we're going to go to Spain, Italy, and Greece. Yeah. And I may end up going to Colombia at the end yeah. of this year. I have not quite decided yet. Okay. And so I know I'll that, that you had a connection to Peru as well, because you want yes. to tie in like more of the shamanic work. Mm -hmm. And my cousin right. and I are actually talking about possibly going there mm -hmm. next year as well. 
Okay. So that will be the two biggest places, the two big things I do next year. Yeah. So connecting to like the spirituality Mm -hmm. energy and yeah, let me look back at. um, Yeah. Because my moon runs through. You had your moon line right through Peru. So you'd feel like right at home and it's MC. So it's all about the future and the, and your career, right? Like you kind of embodying, yeah, this, this energy of home. So I love that. Yeah. So yeah, you can reach Amy, a Russell 0312. The information will be in the show notes, but yeah, you can, you can connect with her, you know, watch her journey, all her travels through Arizona, through, through Europe. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Unless you have anything else to to share. Yeah, that is not right now. Other than I just, like I said, I'm, I'm really interested or excited to see where this journey leads yeah and I'm excited to see yeah how like all these planetary energies like where they will lead you and yeah I'm excited to see you know how life will turn out in on the west coast you know I know I'm excited about that too so to be continued so thank you thank you for being on today and remember lineage goes beyond your ancestors you're meant to connect to the cosmos so you may finally find your cosmic family until next time Thank you. Thank you for listening to Cosmic Roadmap. If you would like to book a session with me to explore your own cosmic roadmap and chart your next destination in business, love, and life, then head over to CosmicRoadmap.com.